You're listening to A Glimpse Inside on the Super Power Up Network, the show that affirms for people there is more to life and it is possible to be happy, inspired, successful, joyous, and free. Welcome to A Glimpse Inside. I'm Wendy Parati, and you are listening to Episode 3 of our four-part Relationship Rescue Series. In Episode 2, we met Megan, who's working on creating deeper connections in her life. Ultimately, she wants a loving relationship. In this second coaching episode, we'll see what Megan's been up to for the past two weeks, and we'll help her use that to push the pebble forward. For all of us, there's a link between self-love and relationships. We talked with Megan about that last time, and I have no doubt that it's going to reappear again today. Before we dive in with her, I want to be clear, though. While loving oneself unconditionally is of course, a completely worthwhile goal for all of us. There's no finish line to this work. I don't know that I've ever even met anyone who's 100% there. I know I'm certainly not. And I sure as hell don't want you, Megan, or anyone else to feel that you need to achieve this huge thing before you can have amazingly deep, meaningful, and loving relationships because nothing could be further from the truth. Instead, We're looking for all the ways that negative self-talk, that self-protection that we create, can interfere with our happiness, with our confidence, and the way we show up with others. So by untangling and rewiring some of those stories, everything starts to move into a happier, more peaceful alignment. And we'll be working on that today with Megan, I'm sure. Um, And it's certainly something that we can all use in our lives. So Megan. Welcome back. Thanks, Wendy. How are you today? Uh, I'm okay. I'm um, I'm just kind of okay today. Okay. We all have days that are just kind of okay, and um, and the important thing is to realize that that's part of pushing the pebble forward too, right? Doing the work that we're doing together um, is about making it work in real life, in real time. And that never unfolds <laughs> as we expect it to. So we gave you, um, we came up with some homework the last time we talked. Yeah. How, if at all, and you know, it's completely cool to be honest with me about that. Uh, did you experiment with that over the past few weeks? Uh I think the thing that I focused on the most was the listening and tuning into others. Um, in the so a lot of what we had talked about the last time was, you know, that's really easy and effortless um, for me to do in my business. And so transferring those skills over to my personal life and um, I, I can't say that I had a ton of opportunity to do it in my personal life. I don't know that I met much of anybody new in the last couple of weeks because we did have kind of the Thanksgiving break in between and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I tried my best to keep it sort of top of mind. Um, and, uh, uh, I did. And in the meantime, I had a couple of good business things that happened, um, while I was keeping that top of mind. So that's kind of where I am with it. Um, Okay, you know, let's pause right there and tell me what you noticed, both with keeping it top of mind in personal interactions and what you noticed in the things that came up in your business. Um, well, I so I did a um, I did a session at one of the local universities and. Uh, um, it was a um, it was an evening workshop that was open to uh, other entrepreneurs, 
And, um, you know, I've actually taught this workshop before. It was one of their best attended. So they asked me back. And um, I just noticed that it was as effortless as it usually is for me to teach these workshops. It was even more effortless. And I was, and I had, it, it just seemed as though I, I, the people in the room were much more interested in me, so to speak, as I, as I kind of doubled down on my usual take interest and tune in to them. And there was a, there was one gentleman in the room who kept kind of interrupting, which often happens when you're a trainer and you teach workshops. And there was a, a woman who often had this look on her face, like, I don't know if I believe you, but she pulled me aside afterwards and told me how great the workshop was and how what a wonderful job I did of handling this guy who kept interrupting because I didn't shut him down. I didn't make him feel um, that he couldn't have an opinion or shouldn't have an opinion, uh, but I also didn't let him take up the energy of the room. Because by the end, when he spoke up, the whole room started like, ugh, <laughs> you know, and, and that was their response. It wasn't my response. I just answered him. Uh, so I think that that's one. And then I had a, um, a one-on-one -on, -one, um, on Friday with a CEO for a, a big uh, leadership retreat that I'm doing in January. And there was a lot to listen to because she has a lot going on that she's trying to solve. And um, I did a great job of listening more than I spoke. And then I had to ask for a favor of a family member who um, we've had issues in the past. And you reminded me to go into it kind of loving and ask for what I needed and let it be okay if the answer was no. And the answer was yes and. The answer was yes and I'll do more than you asked. What surprised you about that? Well, because of things that have happened in the past that I really don't want to go on to, into on this call. Um, the story that I was telling myself was that it would be annoying to her to help. Mm -hmm. um, so th I guess that's what surprised me. Okay. So that's really interesting uh, that you bring that up in that way because that's so often what gets in the way of us moving forward in, in our relationships, we're measuring what we think is going to happen against what happened in the past. And that makes sense, right? It's really smart of us to do that because we know that if we put our hand on a hot stove, we're going to get burnt. We can measure that by what has happened in the past we learn from experience. The problem is when it comes to people and relationships, we're much more complex than hot stoves. And the smallest nuanced changes in behavior can absolutely impact the result, even when all other things appear to be equal. And so when we measure our experience of the past against what we think is going to happen in the future, we end up holding ourselves back from something better than happened than what happened in the past. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. And in in a lot of ways, I wasn't giving her credit for her growth. Hmm. Right. Um, She's let me down a number of times in the past. 
uh, but you know, I, we all grow in time. We all change. And, um, yeah. Um, and it's hard to see that, right? When it's, it's hard to see that when we're in our heads, when we're in the default. Yeah, it is. I think that the other thing is that, so one of the things that we had also, we had, well, the, the thing that we had really talked about on the last coaching session is I'm at a place where, you know, I'm trying to decipher the concept of, um, I don't want just any relationship I want a great relationship and okay, it's easy to find any relationship maybe, but it's not able, able to find that one relationship. And I think I'm feeling better about that. I think I'm feeling kind of over the hump about that as a possibility. So now it is a shift to, okay, so now how do I set that up to kind of attract that? And we had also talked about the fact that you know, the getting out and doing, and I, and I, I'm going to say it again, and Wendy's going to get mad at me. Oh, I don't get mad. (laughs) I've seen you beat your head before. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen that. A little forehead smack every now and then, you know, it's just for emphasis. It's, it's, she, (laughs) she really wants to smack me folks in a loving way, but, um, no, I'm just teasing. Um, the, um, because I, because I need it. But the thing of it is, is that I do remember saying to you back in like July, it's July and I still haven't done anything. Well, now it's 2020 for all intents and purposes. Um, and so, you know, we had talked about last time the the struggle with it when I get responses on various dating sites or apps or whatever, the struggle of um, of responding, you know, the the still a, a little bit of that feeling of um, well won't make much difference. The Michigash, the whole, the, the whole windy uh, mess that is my head. Okay, you know what, Megan? This is a beautiful. Uh, you gave us some really beautiful stuff to work with in our coaching session um, today. I love the quote. Uh, it's twenty twenty, and I still haven't done anything. We're going to dive right on into that. Um, I'm getting a little bit of interference. Uh, We're going to dive right into that when we uh, come back from our short break. Okay, so, so far we've been talking with Megan about what's been going on for her in the past few weeks. When we come back from this short break, we'll get right into the coaching. And as always, I'll give her and you some things to start playing with today that can help with your growth and transformation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone. This is Tonya Don Reckla, Executive Director of Superpower Experts, and we want to thank each of you for making Superpower Up the number one podcast network for personal development and spiritual growth, because people like you have the courage to say that mindfulness, healthy living, disrupting reality, the pursuit of consciousness, responsible entrepreneurship, and radical parenting matter. We now amass over 1 million downloads monthly in more than 90 countries. Our numbers keep growing because there are far more people willing to live divergently than mass media wants to acknowledge. For you, the change makers, the light bearers, the way showers, we say thank you. If you're ready to take the next step in your evolution, go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz. And as Neva Lee Rekla, our youngest podcaster, likes to remind us, remember, we all have superpowers and we can change the world. Okay, so happy to have you back with us. Today, you are listening to episode three of our four-part relationship rescue series. 
we're ready to dig into some coaching with Megan, who in turn is ready for a loving relationship in her life. Okay, Megan. So before our break, um, you told us some really cool things that you noticed about playing um, with the homework in your real life. And we might touch back on some of those as we move forward today. Um, I love that you're owning this shift that you made. made. That's huge to have made the shift from, in the very beginning, real love doesn't exist. Men don't love women. And if they did, they would never love me. To opening that little bit of belief that said, maybe they could love me. Maybe it's real. To this new realization that, huh, I really could have a relationship. There have been lots of opportunities, but I want a great relationship. I want that true connection, and I haven't found that yet, um, and wanting to start working on attracting that. So first and foremost, really congratulate yourself. That's hard work. That was a huge, deep-seated story that you have really shifted over time. And all of these things that are playing out from you for you right now are really in part a result from the shift in that story. So yay you. Thank you. I want to start by digging into, and I'm sure you know why is, and I'm going to read it back to you. It's 2020 and I still haven't done anything. I understand the sentiment behind that. And we're going to coach around that. But I, for I my benefit, just for fun, just for fun, Megan, <laughs> tell me, tell me why you think that I want you to revisit that statement. Uh, the same thing you always tell me, which is, you know, just trying to get the mindset. But I mean it literally. I know I mean, you do. I, I mean, I, I will say, and this goes to what you just um, said, I do feel, I do feel more of an openness. Um, and that is, you know, it's an, I can't, I can't quantify that for people listening, but I feel more of an openness than I did certainly a year ago. Um, and even, you know, several months ago, um, But the thing that you know about me, Wendy, is I'm a show upper. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of the, and for anybody listening out there, who's also a sort of a, you know, go getter personality, like you get things done, you've got to show up and do it. I, I think that they can identify with that concept of, you know, there's the part of me that's saying, well, you're not showing up for it. Mm. Yeah. And that's exactly why I want to dig into that statement because what I'm hearing is that you're seeing a truth in that statement that doesn't actually exist, right? I still haven't done anything negates all of the work that you've done on becoming more open. That's not easy work. On all of the work that you've done about showing up in ways that you have not shown up in the past, that's not easy work, right? Generally speaking, we sh- the way we interact with people on a day-to-day basis comes out of our default operations. So to make a shift in that and a shift that carries through and becomes a new default takes a lot of intentional doing. And you have done that. So in addition to that mindset piece that we don't want you putting that into your mindset, I haven't, I still haven't done anything. I don't want you to negate or not recognize those things that you have done. Because as you're discovering, 
the way we make things happen in this work, Megan, is by building on the successes. So all of the ways that you have been breaking the chains of the default and intentionally rewriting some old stories, intentionally showing up in new ways, some of which are uncomfortable the first few times you try it or the first dozens of times that you try it. That's serious work. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. It's just I haven't quite disconnected them and... And then just from the do from the quote unquote doing standpoint, I I you and I have talked about the fact that it needs to be that kind of okay, so what next mm. approach when you know I, I'm on a dating app and I answer guys back and they don't answer me or I decide I'm not interested in someone and I it that's another mindset that I'm struggling with as well. Mm -hmm. I think because um, it's very easy to get in the trap of, I have to do this a specific way or I have to play this game or I have to answer it this way. Or if this is somebody that I'm really interested in, it could be the one, how am I going to blow it? So So again, this is all the ball of yarn that goes on in my head. And I, I marvel all the time at the, the people out there for whom this is really easy. Because obviously there's millions of them because they're married or they're in a relationship. So the cool thing is that it's actually easy for you too, just not in this one space. Okay. And that's the connection I want to make with the doing that you actually are doing, the success that you actually are having. Okay. We can tie that right back in to um, what we talked about in the the first few minutes of the call um, with experimenting in new ways. Okay. Does that make sense? Right? Yeah. With with looking at evidence in new ways. Because the evidence that you had about how things will turn out fed your belief system. We talked about this last time. And that fed your actions. Okay? As that changes and you're showing up differently, That old evidence no longer exists. It's not a hot stove. It's a much more complex system that changes readily with very subtle changes in how you're showing up. So the more you do this work, each time you put yourself out there, as long as you're not measuring yourself and the situation with old evidence, you're creating a completely new set of rules, a completely new set of potential outcomes. Does that make sense? Yes. You're sure? Because I know you tell me when it doesn't. Don't hold back. Um, Yes. It's always made sense. The issue is the, the making, um, making sense in my mind versus feeling it in my entire being. Do you know what I mean? I absolutely do. Right. That's, that is, that is the work. That's why reading a book doesn't get you there. That's why as much as we can intellectualize and learn stuff, about how to change our lives, our lives don't change until we actually play with it in our real life. Because it never turns out exactly the way the book said it will, right? Because the steps don't always go in the exact right order. Because when we play with it in real life, things are a little bit messier 
And in that way, incrementally, we actually learn. Okay. So the thing that I'm saying about how this is actually easy for you too, just not in this area yet. Let's look at what you said about workshops, right? Teaching workshops always feels effortless. Hey, some quote like that. It's always pretty effortless. This time felt even more effortless. I'm, I'm reading my notes here so that I can get it as close to what you said as possible. People seemed more interested in me the more interested I was in them. Right? So yeah. here it is. Yes. Yes. And I even got, I thought of this after I said that I even got a, uh, one of the participants who reached out to me on LinkedIn and said how much he enjoyed the workshop. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and there was this woman who you thought was making faces at you saying, huh, I don't know if I buy what this lady's selling me. That was the story in your head about this woman. And yet, you weren't right about that. Now, in your role as a facilitator, it's really easy for you to connect. It's really easy for you to not beat yourself up about the woman who might be making a face in row three. Right? It was a nice surprise that she came up and said, wow, you really rocked it. But you wouldn't have been wringing your hands if she hadn't. Where if this right. were in a dating scenario, you would have been. Yes. Right? So this stuff actually is easy for you. We're just going to um, migrate it over to a different part of your life. And in order to do that, you're going to experiment with it in small ways in the real world. And you're going to constantly remind yourself to not measure what you're doing against old evidence, against old outcomes. Make sense? It does. And the other thing that I thought of too is, you know, on, uh, on the business side of things, we always talk about for entrepreneurs attracting the right clients. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> the client that I mentioned earlier, where I said, I, you know, it was a, it was a 90 minute meeting and I, and I, uh, listened more than I spoke and she had a lot that she's trying to solve. But what, an, one thing that's interesting that just struck me, Wendy, is that, um, so in, in my communications, I do communications work. So in my work, I use a lot of different modalities and I, I pull from a lot of different places. And one of the things that I, one of the places I pull from is Brene Brown's work. And um, the CEO brought up Brittany Brown's work and said, I really like that. And I want my team to read this. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, that's interesting because that's what I was going to talk about. And I pulled out the value sheet that Brene publishes for people to use. I said, this is one of the places we'll start the day with. And so the reason that I'm bringing this up is because um, as you were talking, it, I kind of had this bing bing moment of, okay, well, that were that was a situation where the person that I attracted to me, and by the way, she heard about me from somewhere else and looked at my website and called me. I'd never met her before I first spoke on her to her on the phone, right? So the person that I attracted in this situation is very sort of like-minded. Does that make any sense? Am I yeah. making any sense? It absolutely does. So it's a it's a little bit of a bing bing moment for me because I'm going, okay, so if you would you know, in this situation, I was just um, 
doing my thing and I attracted someone and, you know, she, at this juncture, at least she is definitely the right client for me Hmm. because we're speaking kind of the same language. Okay. So I love this segue. So if we're going to lean into this big shift you made, right. And use this bing, bing moment as a way to kind of underscore it, right. That thing of any relationship versus a great relationship. How do you attract that in your personal life? Well, that's what I have you for. Yeah. Yeah, you know better than that. I'm not going to give you any kind of advice. Advice is like wearing other people's shoes. You have to figure this out on your own. And you are figuring it out on your own. Right? So how do you? What did you just learn? How can you apply it to the personal part of your life? Well, um, uh, I don't know. I don't, I, I mean, so the attraction happened, that's fine, but the attraction did kind of happen because I, I showed up somewhere. Yeah. So we're right back to where we were. Okay. So, um, I want to give, I want to give our listeners a little bit of backstory, um, Part of this I showed up somewhere comes from homework I gave you this winter where I said, just stop dating. Like we don't, that's not on the table right now. We're not going to put yourself out there in that right now. Okay. And, and as a doer, you're thinking if I'm not going to be out on match and if I'm not doing and I'm not doing and I'm not moving forward in that way, how am I going to have a relationship? So I want to be really clear here that what we're talking, what we were talking about then and what we're talking about now is, um, is part of the process. Then you were temporarily stuck in a loop of, I'm believing these things about myself. And so, but I'm going to force myself out there to show up because that's what I do. I show up. And the things you believed about yourself were um, infusing the air around you when you showed up. And you were creating a lot of this, a lot of similar responses and scenarios. Right? So the goal was, let's just stop doing that because we don't need to build any more of this old evidence. Yeah, I don't need any more men who are actually dating other women. Right? We don't need to build any more of that old evidence. And to do the work that we've done over the past few months that says, wait a minute, who am I really? What do I really want? What do I really believe? And that's all of the things that you've kind of untangled for us so far here today. So much clearer about that. So much clearer about what's possible than you were then. And yes, in your own words, so much more open. So now when you have those interactions, are they going to be as easy as your business interactions? No. Are they going to go well? Not always, right? But now you're coming, you are showing up in a different way. And you're showing up in a different way, Megan, rather consistently, okay? So even in moments where you're in the scary, hairy relationship part of your life, where you're most likely to be, to slip into those defaults, even in those moments, a lot of this new Megan is going to be on the team. And as we said, these nuanced changes in our behaviors make nuanced changes in the way people respond to us and it creates different outcomes. Um, I'm sorry. So what I'm saying is that showing up now is going to be different than it was showing up six months ago. Yeah. And I, I also just had another aha moment. I love it. This is how good you are, Wendy. 
Um, I choked on my water there. Um, I meant that. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the stories that has been a bit of a struggle to unravel, but I think I'm, but the aha moment I just had is that <clears throat> I am starting to unravel it a little bit. Is um, there's just something, you know, I didn't get the, I didn't get the gene. I don't belong in that club. Right. I'm not allowed to have that kind of happiness or that thing. I think that that's, um, I think that's the next uh, mountain to climb or valley to descend into or however you, whichever metaphor you want to use. Okay. Uh, Because to your point about, um, not no longer attracting the type of guys that I've attracted in the past who for the audience's edification have been um, kind of sort of interested, but not really, or have been interested while they're dating somebody else or have been, um, or who just didn't kind of get me or weren't willing to commit. Um, I can't, until I deconstruct this other conversation about about them and about attracting that and about how I just didn't get the gene, uh, I, I can't attract something different. Hmm. And so to, to circle it back to the client that I was talking about earlier, <clears throat> I had had, you will recall that back in the summer, I had a potentially big client who kept kind of stringing me along and stringing me along mm-hmm. and then decided that I was too expensive. And the switch with this particular client that we're talking about today, she made a decision really quick. She got everything on the calendar. She gave me dates. She's signed the contract. And um, the idea in both of the cases is if I go in and I do a good job, potentially there's more work in the company. And, um, so something also shifted on that. So that's, you know, that's sort of the example, right? There was something that shifted from the summer business wise in my mindset. And so if I can make that same, whatever shift that was, I don't even know what that one was. Um, then maybe I can attract the, the right kind of guy at least. I'm going to stop babbling now. I feel like I'm babbling. You're not babbling at all. Okay. That's the way our minds work, right? That's our minds work in sort of this tangle. And if you don't have an opportunity to speak it and put it out there, especially where there's somebody to reflect it back to you, it stays in the tangle. Right? That's, a, that's an, the untangling is an important part of this work. So, it is a huge learning, um, it, the shift that you made in your business. I, I want to address for a moment before we kind of tie that in the story of I didn't get the gene. I'm not allowed to have that kind of happy. Let's start intellectually. How true do you think that is? Intellectually. Uh, well, I know that there's no gene, so we'll start there. Okay. Um, 
it still hits a emotional nerve. And what's the emotional nerve based on? Uh, evidence. Right. The past. Yeah, lots and lots of it. Lots and lots of it. So what um, what learning – actually, I'm just going to throw it in there. I'll give you this one. So that evidence, the next step in this is to debunk that evidence based on what intellectually we know that people are not hot stoves, that relationships are not hot stoves, that unlike a hot stove, what happened then will not necessarily happen again now because you're not the same as you were then. What do you mean by hot stove? I haven't heard you that. Um, in the beginning, I gave the example that we learn by experience. You put your hand on a hot stove. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can, you can be rest assured that if you do that again, you're going to get the exact same burn. Our experience with people is not the same, although in our minds, we make it to be the same as that. We say that these kinds of interactions, interactions with men in the dating world, is like a hot stove. I'm going to get burnt. I got burnt 50 times already or 500 times already. Of course, I'm going to get burnt again. Only we need to debunk that truth because in fact, it's not a truth. Okay. People in relationships, not the same as a hot stove. The same circumstances can yield incredibly different results depending on the two people and how they show up. Even subtle changes make a big difference. Right? So what's one thing that happened in the past few weeks that you talked about today that proved that out? Uh, the issue with my family member asking for help. Yeah. Right. You put yourself out there and we had talked about that in advance. You worked hard to make sure that you operated outside of your default. Had you shown up to that phone call with the same armor showing up in the same way that you had in the past, it would have triggered that person's evidence about you right? And that person would have reacted in their default way. But instead, some very nuanced changes in the way you showed up on that call allowed for a different outcome to take place. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to put a little bit of homework together around this. Um, and I'm feeling like there are two components that are going to be important um, for this homework. One is the thing that we're talking about right now, and that's debunking the hot stove myth, right? Leaning into different behaviors yield different outcomes. Okay, and leaning into um, and maybe even being very clear that our definition of behavior broadly encompasses all of the nuanced ways that we show up, right? So a behavior isn't I put myself on match.com and I answer a text. Yes, that is a behavior, but the language that you use, how quickly you answer or don't answer, the tone that you take, all of those inform the behavior that we're talking about as evidenced with this little thing with your family member. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So leaning into these new behaviors and using this really rich body of evidence of all the, the ways that that's really easy for you in so much of your life, right? You don't need to reinvent the wheel here, Megan. You can use things that you already do with ease most of every day. Okay. So that's part one of this. So showing up in this new way and debunking that old hot stove evidence. And part two of it, hold on to your hat because you're not going to like this. No, no. (laughs) I want you to hear it fully. Okay. I want to make sure that we're clear about it. Part two of it is realizing that um, sometimes the best things we attract come out of nowhere. Well, okay, that I do know. Okay. So, yes, putting yourself out there, you're never going to meet somebody sitting in your apartment twiddling your thumbs and watching Game of Thrones or whatever. I know that's – I don't know what's cool now. (laughs) Outlander. Oh, is that back out? Two months. Two months. All right. So you're never going to meet somebody new sitting in your apartment, twiddling your thumbs and watching Outlander. Um, So being out there and showing up in this new way is a critical component of it. But simply allowing for opportunity to come in ways that you can't possibly expect right now will invite them in just like this woman who heard about you from somewhere went to your website and bingo boingo booked a contract with you right once i yeah that part i oddly that part i actually get okay it's it's the stuff in the middle of that I keep throwing in, in my way to get to that part. Yeah. So let's broaden that definition you have of showing up in this dating or meeting people arena. It can be match. It can be going on dates. It can be just hanging out with your friends. It can be anything that gets you out into society, showing up as you. All right, that's what we want you to do. It doesn't have to be some specific dating regimen. You can throw that in there if it feels right. But showing up as you and allowing for opportunity is the critical component here, okay? Okay. All right. So um, any questions about that homework before we wrap? I don't think so. All right, my friend, you're really rocking this. And um, you did a, a hell of a lot in 2019. I hope you give yourself credit for it. Thank you. All right. Thanks. So as promised, I'm going to give everybody listening in a tool that you can all experiment with in your relationships. And, um, and this one's really simple. This is one that you can use in absolutely every relationship in your life. Drop the rope. Okay. We all have an innate need to get our point across. We all have an innate need to be heard. We all have an innate need to be right to some degree or another. And in different ways, sometimes passively and sometimes aggressively. So for those of you who don't like conflict and feel like they're never tugging on the rope in a tug of war, they're the ones who never even pick up the rope, think about how that passivity is actually creating a tug of war also. Um, In our relationships, we tend to be pulling on a rope with a person that we're in communication with a lot of the time. Okay, and especially in relationships that are long standing, colleagues that we've worked with for years, our family of origin, long friendships, there are a lot of these things that we tug back and forth on, and they get in the way 
of that depth of relationship, of that depth of meaning and intimacy. Okay. Now, I'm not saying it's not important to stand up for what you believe in. I'm not saying that it's not important for us to have really um, rich conversations with one another in our relationships. It absolutely is. But much of the time, when we're pulling on a rope, we don't even know why the hell we're pulling on it. We don't even know why the heck we've got this tension between us in a conversation. It's an old loop and we feel like, oh my God, how did we get back here again? Can't believe we got back here again. I don't even know what the heck we're talking about. So the easiest way to drop the rope is to get really clear about what's important to you in your relationships what the outcome that you want to have happen is, right? If the outcome really is, I need for you to hear this thing that I'm trying to tell you, then you can drop the rope and ask them questions about their point so that you can get your point in. Oftentimes, though, the thing that we really want is connection. The thing that we really want in our relationships is closeness. And the tugging and pulling is meaningless. So when you drop the rope and agree to see somebody just as they are, sometimes it can be humorous. You can say, hey, I see that this is really important to you. You could have it, make a joke of it. You could say, let's agree to disagree. I'm walking away from this. Or you can just shift the conversation into something that is meaningful. So the tool that I want you to all play with in your relationships is notice when you feel that tug with somebody, whether it's passive or aggressive in a relationship, notice that there's a rope that's being pulled back and forth in the tug of war and experiment with different ways that you can drop it and keep the conversation going or drop it and walk away to come back for um, a better moment for a conversation. See what happens in your relationship when you have less ropes. Okay. So Megan, I want to thank you for sharing so openly with us today. Thanks, Wendy. I really appreciate you. Um, just telling your story um, so articulately. And I'm sure there are so many people out there who can hear themselves in that story. And that is always useful. I also want to thank everybody out there for listening in and holding the space with us today. In fact, I've got my standing offer for all of you. We all do have a story. And if you're grappling with stuck spots in your life, or you feel that there's more for you, but you can't quite put a finger on what that is or how to get there. Whether you'd like to come on the show and get some free coaching, or you'd just like to share your story with me, I really would love to hear from you. Simply go to a glimpseinside.superpowerexperts.com. And again, it's important that you not type a www for this link. It's just a glimpseinside.superpowerexperts.com. I hope you reach out. Next time, I'll be talking about the art of healing relationships with author C.L. Anderson. She writes about the sometimes difficult relationships between mothers and daughters. I hope you'll tune in. Until then, big love. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today.